my ox. Hello. So, uh, William has connected us, and I see this as a very important conversation, and uh, he has spoken very highly of you. And I'm at a point right now, I just, before coming on, <laughs> I, I put up 72 PNGs of these conversation types into the world. It, and it was a sort of symbolic act of sort of releasing a bit of my life work into the open free space. And it's linked into a software system called the Inflow Matrix that is a planetary operating system. And so I'm looking to see who to ally with or to connect with or with anybody. And William, because I've been connecting with William over the few years, I have a high assessment of who he puts on my path. And so to me, this conversation is an investigation for both of us to see if we want to interact again. And he says that you are a very unique individual. Well, I am that exact redundancy. I am both unique and an individual. So I've watched in preparation of knowing nothing. Um, I watched a few of the videos that were available to me on your website, um, say three days ago. So I don't know where that is in the volley that you've sent out. So you use words um, consistent, consistently. And one of them is speaking about a product of yours, which is the inflow matrix. And you speak about it as an operating system, very much like one would speak about some sort of enterprise software or, or SaaS type thing. So could you explain it to me a little bit more? Because of all of the things that you speak about, it's the one that you put the most punctuation to how you speak of it. So clearly it is a thing as opposed to a concept. So therefore, I, I, I don't really understand it. I understand what you're trying to do, but I don't understand what it is. Um, so if I could understand that a little bit more, I'd appreciate that. Okay. So I guess if we're looking at the heart of software, looking at when I first was introduced into, let's say, Word, any of the software systems, there's a language structure and, and the way it was organized, I couldn't quite grasp it. And I, at some point, like everyone started using it, using the software. And as, as for both our ages, we grew up with not having software and learning to use software, right? So my entire life, I've been using software and, and there's been a side of me that's going, this is something's wrong with this. It's not organized the way I would want to organize it. And so pretty much for the last 25 years, 10 hours a day, I've just been designing maps and interfaces to go, if I was going to organize the ideal software system, how would I do it? And so the inflow matrix, information flowing in the matrix is that. And that's been my prime reference point for all my research, all my design, everything I'm doing is the inflow matrix operating system. And now the assumption is starting with a language construct first, not starting with the software, not starting with the programming limitations, was looking at language and then looking at sacred geometry. Because I was studying spiritual masters and they were putting, you know, pointing towards certain things about the mind and that the mind is either structured or not structured. And when you structure it yourself, it's very different from never structuring it. And so a lot of the spiritual masters were showing you have to structure the mind in order to access the reality that we're in. And so the medicine wheel or the Kabbalah, a lot of spiritual traditions have mind maps that structure the mind. And then your mind is structured in a certain way and then you organize your knowledge in a certain way and then it becomes a worldview and all the people in that world you share that structure, but only the priests or the higher adepts sort of get access to the inner mechanisms of what that is. So I was studying 
what are these maps? And in the beginning, it was just like, just studying everywhere, everywhere. Like Ken Wilber, Ken Wilber went through all the books and traditions looking for maps. And I was doing the same thing. And then I started to make my own maps. And then I started to get downloads. And I got a download about this object called the time translator. And it's nine cycles of time and it becomes a prime reference point for the implemented software system that is using round circles and cycles of time to organize your mind rather than the linear calendar system that we've been taught. So that's the big jump. And I've been pretty much alone in design and just sort of said, screw off to the world. I'm going to figure this out. And every once in a while, I kind of show some people. But fundamentally, I haven't shown anyone what I've done, the full extent of what it is. Okay. Um, and... and William is, is one of the few people okay. who seems to understand a little bit of what I've been doing. So I'm, I'm a two market human being. Okay. Say, that, say that again. I am a two market human being. I say this with jest, but I'm very serious when I say it. I do nothing. I don't want to do anything. I think, I problem solve. I, I, I as people, and I know William used it in an in introduction, I am a feng shui human being. I am not a designer, I'm not trying to be an architect, not trying to be a builder. With that said, the understanding is that I'm trying to redesign what already exists into a deliverable to the world. I entered my professional career in the music business because I was exceedingly dyslexic as a child and couldn't read functionally until I was well into sixth grade and that was repeating third grade. So since that embarrassment, I didn't want to live my life with, I just started paying attention. It's funny. When you start paying attention, teachers in school tell you what's going to be on a test, right? And signs lead to other signs and things lead to other things. And if you're paying attention, you can pretty much make your way through it. Music was the thing that made sense to me. When I closed my eyes, I could see it. I knew what it looked like. I knew what the people that were listening to it looked like, what shelf it theoretically went on into the world. And it allowed me to keep up with language. I'm the youngest in my family. My father's a litigation attorney very successfully. And, and conversation was like jousting in my house, right? So how do you keep up if you can't read? You listen, you pay attention. Conversations, inflections, accents, the way people use syntax over grammar, you know, placement of things. In college, I've was very bored as a born and raised New York City kid going to school in rural northern, you know, part of the United States and found a band that when I closed my eyes, I was like, this is where they need to be. Found my way into the business, had relative success here, there, or otherwise, it doesn't matter to me because I can tell you this, for all of my ability to pick something that was great and trendy and delightful and delicious, I couldn't pick loyalty to save my life. I've been run over, maligned, left for dead, raped, killed, beaten. I mean that figuratively. More times than I'd like to count. So at some point, you recognize what your values are. My value is that I solve problems better than most. I objectively can look at something and get the subjective answer. It's just the way I've been good at it. So it's what I do. It's what I've always done. and It's what I continue to do and how I hold myself out to the world. Because... Recognizably, if I can understand the DNA of something, chalk, cheese, styrofoam, Swedish death metal, doesn't matter to me. When it has a DNA, it has a resonance, like all things in the universe. And if something has a resonance, it then has some sort of harmonic, which means that there's an F frequency for it. And then therefore there's some sort of amplitude that you can raise the wavelength for and get more things like it to move. Music is just the easiest example of it. You hear something that you love, your hair stands up on end. 
you're not going to be able to explain to me why, nor does it much matter because your subjective hair standing up on end is my different than my subjective hair standing up on end. But objectively, something is happening that if you can capture subjectively, I can talk to different people using the same type of thing. When I recognized I wasn't going to be the president of the record company that I always wanted to be the president of as a child, I was like, well, hell, I got to get out of here and go do something else with my life. I went into plastics. I don't mean it literally. I mean it subjectively. I went into extension for people, beauty, cosmetic, skin care. I need a XYZ with my name on it. How do I do it? Again, it's back to DNA. If you are famous or heralded for being well-known for something, you could be the biggest pop star or back in the day, you could have been an astrophysicist. That's why everybody knows Einstein, yeah? He was the best at it. He was famous for being an authority at something. Well, then you could probably resonate into other things. Hence, people wear T-shirts of Einstein, right? Like, you can just move into other things because relatively for somebody, they can now get involved with you. And after doing that successfully for other people for a long time, I got very bored of it. Still have to make a living. And unfortunately for me, my wife got ill. Fortunately for the universe, my wife got ill. And having to solve her equation, I met a bunch of people that were thought leaders and, and guru type folks who are moving the conversation forward. And they're the same thing, to be honest with you. The difference between one authority and somebody else's authority is just how it's packaged and put out to the world. Because at the end of the day, it's all of our own individual journeys, to your point. When you can organize your mind in the way that works best for you to organize your mind, you can then access the higher powers and, and elevations, but we'll begin to recognize that there are similar stories that are told around the globe. And in diametrically opposed geographies, they're telling the same myths. We're dealing with the same archetypes. So at some point, it gets back to DNA of something. What are you? Where do you resonate from? I'm super good at it because I'm not trying to imprint myself on the things. I really would like to not be known. I'd like to be very well successful. I'd love to be heralded as the guy that did X, Y, Z, but I don't need to be known. It's not my encumbrance of the 21st century isn't, you know, instant fame. It's just not. So in that, what I'm able to do with people is get from their brain to their fingertips and then their fingertips to the audience and let the audience be the person that brings it to the world. And then the world recognizes why it needs it and comes back for more. And, and that's, you know, where I work with people like, you know, like with Graham William, you know, or those type folks, because for me, I, I didn't wake up with an epiphany. I, I just haven't, I haven't had a aha eureka moment of, you know what I need to do for the world. However, I'd like to think that I am an awake conscious person that knows that if I can contribute to a greater good and have a, a, a echo in that valley, you know, that I might be able to carry through time in some way, shape or form, because that's, that's the relevance. You know, when they say that you die, you die three times, you know, physical form when they put you in the grave. And then when the last person speaks of you, well, how long can you prolong that? What if you can prolong that forever? What if you can slow down time that there is no death? Because frankly, you have done what you're supposed to do on the great you know, tuning fork of the universe. Theoretically, it should just keep going on. There's no reason unless acted on by an opposite force that it should ever stop. And that, that to me is where we are in the world from going from you know, the Newtonian days of petrochemical to the quantum days of everything's possible if you can just plug into it. My dog's having a conversation in the backyard with his neighbor friend. So here we are, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of how to eat an elephant one bite at a time. I find it to be successful. Um, I get that the great undertakings are like change, but I also know that moving a freight train is a very slow, very purposeful experience so that nothing falls off the shelves. 
And that's kind of humanity to me. You know, dealing with 1% is great. That's only 75 million people. Except the problem is, is that you're one person and you might only be able to control 150 connections. You know? And then with inside of all of those patternings become how people like you and I create opportunity so that it can, you know, become the, the rock that ripples the water. You know, it goes in all directions. Ripples don't just happen forward. They go everywhere. So how do we do that? So give, I sent you a message in the email. How did, what, what was your response in your mind? My response in my mind was, it looks very interesting. I need to know more. I don't, I believe that I live in a world that's a conspiracy of dunces, not a conspiracy of happenstance. Simply meaning like there have been so many plans set off against so much time, over time, against time, and people forgot what they did and oops, did I still have that in the drawer? And wow, how did that become so fungus? I didn't, oh, I forgot about it. That plans upon plans upon plans that there isn't a through line any longer. So if I just say that to say that like when I get an all encompassing answer, my brain goes super narrow. So when I read through your stuff, I thought it was interesting. But to be honest with you, just being perfectly frank, I liked the pictograms that because they were bright colors. And, and I don't pretend to ever be anything more than a troglodyte. It allows me to move through the world very easily. You know, like I, am, I have terrible eyesight, terrible eyesight. I don't wear glasses any longer and I do not have contact lenses in. I've stopped caring. I only wear glasses when I operate an automobile. Other than that, after my arm's length, I see nothing. I am very, very nearsighted. And I mean that literally and figuratively. At this point in my life, I refuse to be distracted by shiny objects. I was in the music business, thank you very much. At this point in my life, I actually believe in small tribes. Communities happen. I believe in tribes. Why? Because we can take care of each other. It's not about the ideology of them. It's about who you can count on. Therefore, tribes become communities and then communities become strongholds. You don't have to have everything the same, but you have to have an understanding of what it is that you're looking for. So when I looked at your mission statement, I went, this is very interesting. And there's some tie-ins into this to other things that I'm hearing. Because again, I know that if I can get a guy like you and a guy like Graham and a guy like this person and a guy like that person all to look at each other and recognize. So for example, I don't know which one's the chicken or the egg in this conversation, but I know when I talk to Graham, he also talks about board games and card games and dice games. And so have you now, again, I don't know whose thought it was. I don't care. Go look at patent office. They all get filed at the same time. It's who gets to the market first. That matters. Yes. That's why we know Marconi. It has nothing to do with his genius in radio. Got to the market first. Okay? That's why you know Edison. Nothing to do with his genius, though he had a ton of it, and they all did. It's that he got to the market. So in looking at somebody that says, I want to go do this in the world, and one of the ways that I'm going to do it is in these identifiable construct forms, I go, cool, I've heard that also from that guy and that guy. But what if you had a revival? I think cards are amazing. One, because they're tactile in a world that's ever slipping into what is reality, right? Two, when you get past the basic 52 stack, you can do anything with them, as you well know, because you can assign the numbers in this, in, in, into other constructs of games. Three, there has been a revival of Dungeons and Dragons and that style of um, game has come back. And I just don't mean the mythic side of it. I mean like people literally sitting down and trying to get a, might as well be trivial pursuit. You know what I mean? They're trying to get a this. So for that, if I could take a card construct and reintroduce something, that's something that always sits in somebody's drawer from now and forever. They take it with them and it's their, their thing. They go to the party and, so in that, I like that as a, call it a delivery system. And if that delivery system has three or four authorities, so to speak, using them as a method, then now I have something bigger going on. So 
to me, you also use the word ally. And that designates that somebody's also going to be against you, right? I'm an affiliate person because I have to be honest with you. I'm not trying to save anybody at all. I've done that. I've tried it. It's done nothing for me and has only left me in more of a, I got to now have to figure out how to thrive mode than it ever would have if I had just taken the information and just let it out there for the world. So I just say that the, I'm not trying to, I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu as a hobby. If I want to go fight somebody, I'll just go fight somebody. What I'm trying to do is understand what can move forward. So though I don't disagree with both what I think you're saying by definition, I actually think what you're really saying is you're looking for affiliate relationships, people to take your stuff and do something with it, not necessarily an ally versus an enemy. And if that's the case, then what I suggest to you is you get just somebody like me to throw people off the high parapet and then there's no more enemy. You just move forward. Okay. But I say that to say that there are a couple people. And when I say people, I should say networks. I should say that correct that there are a couple networks of people around the globe that are doing, I don't want to say similar, I don't want to say the same, but are, but are looking with inside, of, with inside of the equations. And thereby, if there's a commonality to it so that you can take your, you know, your interface, your inflow matrix interface, and to your point, make it available to some folks to kick it around and use it so that then there's a new called construct of things that could be really very interesting. So with inside of, to bring back to answer your damn question, inside of what I saw of yours, for somebody like me, I get fuzzed very easily. I'm not going to lie about it. I have to be very interested to go all the way deep in. But what I did gleam from it was, wow, there is an outline here. There is, a, there is an organized thought here. There is a presentation. There is a it's a box, not a sphere. It's a, you know, this, not a that. And that I thought was very charming in a let me know more. But then it comes to I need to know who am I'm talking to for my brain to be like, let me get involved. Um, I'm a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I'd like to think I'm an iconoclast, but I'm probably to be per perfectly honest with you, probably just more of a curmudgeon at this point in my life that would rather argue about things. Um, I don't know if I'm a contrarian because I do let a lot of things just kind of go by, but at some point, like, I'm just like, well, if you're not willing to fight for it, then how good is it? You know? Um, and I think that a lot of people are willing to not fight about their construct, which is where I'm going, but are willing to fight with their idea. So therefore, if you have a good construct, if you have a good way for people to come in and organize and not what they are organizing, and I'm not saying that yours isn't, but I'm saying for others to overlay, then there, I think there's a real opportunity in that. As somebody that, when I came out of the music business, I had a business partner and in the late 90s or early, next mid 90s, we built for our distribution company, a file base manager, you know, like. And we used FileMaker because there was no such thing as a database at the moment. And like 10 years later, they were still using it. Meanwhile, Excel and like, you know, real database management systems had come onto the market. But it worked well enough for them in FileMaker and they hadn't exceeded the basic limits that it had. That, and not until somebody came along and was like, yeah, that's great guy, but here's a real one. You know, did they realign everything? Because it does take going back through all of your catalog and reassigning and re. So to get somebody to do that, you really do need to have something that becomes, you know, uh, change for them, real change for them. And I digress. That I, I recognize that I just ranted, but so it goes. Well, this is a first contact convo. Uh, 72 conversation types. This is the only one where you just meet once, right? So <laughs> truth be told. So it, it's, it's, you know, I, I'm left a, a bit of, I don't know, bewilderment, but it's sort of like in each conversation where I meet someone for the first time and I, and I know the significance. A lot of times I don't know the significance, but this one, I, I, I have a, a sense 
because I've been pretty isolated and I've been very careful about the containment of what I've been designing. Sure. And, and, and again, just before coming on, it was a symbolic taking these 72 conversation cards types, which are in a card deck. And I've thought, you know, if someone put this in software, this is going to change how our species communicates. And I haven't had a team or anyone sort of say, like, just do this, 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 that, you know, I haven't had that. I've just been like alone in a coffee shop designing, you know, over and over and over and over. So my, my, my connection to reality is a little bit off, but my connection to the theoretical side of this is very on. And I think... Yeah. Just, just let me finish. finish yeah, I'm sorry. Let me finish. Um, and so, you know, this is like a, this is like being in the deep caves for 25 years and coming out, and, and you meet someone at the front of the cave, and he goes, "Go talk to that guy." And I, because I trust William, that's why we're talking. Because basically, every human being on the planet, I think, could could use this card set. Like, system and can you like it's a it truly distinguishes the paradigm of that's where we were and this is where we're going and i have a methodology a process tools and the whole shebang of how to do so a plan an actual real plan that once you understood and other people understood our species can move into a whole new world and, and i would say you know show me your plan i'll show you mine you know okay. integrate it connect it no but so can I, can I interrupt for just two seconds? Okay. Okay. So here's the reality of the world. For me, there are people that are thinking and then there are people that are buying. They are different. They will never be the fucking same. So at some point, you should recognize that you have an opportunity to curate and to enterprise. They do not need to put their hands together. So the little circular disc that you just shook in your hand Correct. That's yours. Yeah. Okay. So if I were to if I were to say that's curatable, I can curate that right now. We can go on an Instagram. I can find enough. Disclaimer: I apologize to anybody I shall offend. I have no idea what you intend to use this video for, and frankly, I'm tired of censoring myself. Okay. At the end of the day, you can take that little device, that thing, and we can go onto Instagram right now, and I can find you 5,000 people that need to buy that because they don't know where to start. They are stuck in a white noise loop. They are listening, they're watching uh, Wim Hof breathing videos and hyperventilating, so they're not getting it. They're sitting down listening to guided meditations from fucking Puffy on Instagram for free, on Amazon for free. Yeah, that's truth. Go on to Amazon Books. You can you can look at it, the meditation under audible.com and Sean Puffy Combs can read you a guided meditation because that's definitely what you need for fucking meditating. Okay? So the reality is on the pure consumer, there's people that are thinking and then there are people that are buying. I'm putting down my thinking hand. On the consumer side, you can. There's an audience there, and in that audience, there's obviously capitalism. So great, we can make a lot of money. But there's remun. You can remunerate your idea, meaning this one worked, that one didn't work. Yes, you can capitalize your idea, but you can remunerate it. I this worked versus that. People connected to this, they didn't connect to that. And since they're asleep, that's an actual test. That's actually the Pavlovian test. There, you, said, you said you're doing a short interruption? Or is this a long yeah, I'm, No, I'm done. Okay. What I want is for you to figure out curation, enterprise. Enterprise are the people that you're trying to elevate. The people that need your system that we can get to. The curate part, frankly, gives you the volume that you're going to need for the enterprise people. Okay. I, I, I don't want to kind of... That's where I'm at. Okay, yeah. I, I don't quite want to discuss, let's say, distribution right now. 
I'm not talking about distribution. I'm talking about organization. I'm not, I, I, I'm not actually anywhere out of, we're, we're in a messy closet right now. And I'm now, oh, I got it. That side, that side. Let's just do this real quick and then take a look at it. I, the door's closed behind us actually, which is why I said, I don't know where this video is going and now I'm gonna take <laughs> off, the door's closed, right? Because one of the problems here is you just can't be everything to everybody. So what you have to recognize is how to get people to ring you as you're calling other folks. And when the two things are happening, you're like, oh, cool, I need that. That phone rang, that was interesting. As you're chasing your perfect case studies, who are the people that don't know that they need us yet, but we know that they could be doing better with us? I got a question for you. Because Graham and I are sort of, uh, I would say, I would call us originators, originating a new field of knowledge. And we're, and most, and there's originators, let's say, who brought their work into the world and we're originators that haven't. Then there's originators who have been fully supported to bring their work into the world and then originators that haven't. And so the, the originators that haven't been supported, that have something to bring to the world, those are the people, like I see myself and I see what I've gone through to do what I've done. And basically I did it with these two things, right? A piece of paper and a pencil. That was my tools. I said, no one can stop me. Coffee shop, low cost. I'm just gonna do this. And I'm not, I'm not doing it for the money. And I'm not going to be, I'm not gonna have my direction taken away by like the funders or by anyone else. I'm just going pure to source and coming up with remedy. And I was very, very persistent and stubborn in that, meaning I did not get diluted. I did not change course for anyone or anything for basically 25 years and went boom, boom, boom. And it was, it's a tale. But now I have the goods. And I'm a very, let's say, I got the green light in a sense. I've been waiting for the green light and recently I got the green light. And you know, you, you kind of like the people around you, they either know what you're doing or they don't. But from, from what I understand, like look at Graham, like when he finally like, I knew him for a couple of years and I was watching him online. And then he told me about his, the game he's designing now. And then there was this, holy fuck, that's like the best fucking idea I've ever fucking heard. And I, I deal with ideas. And then I've just one portal, everything I have is one portal in a freaking room. And he's got eight other people in portal. Like, fuck. You know, and then, you know, I had this moment of, he's with his girlfriend, he's, and he's going, oh yeah, I don't have a laptop. I was like, this guy has this idea, and it's that valuable, and he doesn't even have a freaking laptop. Like, and I, and I know, I know how I've lived, like with a pencil. I know when you live, let's say, telling source or whatever you want to tell the great mystery, say, okay, I'm in, you know. I'll just go your path. You know, you throw everything off and do your Kwai Tang Kane and do your Kung Fu, walk around with nothing. It's a very different life than, you know, aiming at the dollar. You know, it's either God or dollar and the two don't kind of meet. And so I've done that thing. I understand that. And the, the, the irony is that I was looking to transform the economic system. That was one of my lifetime goals. I'm going to transform this fucking shit show that I see. And so now, it's like there's a community communication room. If one of those in every community in the, in the planet, boom, connect. Totally transform just this card set, this card set of conversation types. Totally transform. Every piece of this puzzle comes together and I can show you, if you give me enough time, the way that humans can go forward, whether they want to or not, in a good way, all within the design. But as you know, there's a whole world out there of humans that have other ideas and <laughs> don't necessarily want to pay attention to a plan or any idea to actually bring us forward into a new world. But last weekend, I was with 12 individuals online in nine stages. The first time I'm sort of being into it with a, a bit of an audience of, of world-class leaders, somebody in cryptocurrency who had raised six billion, somebody who had a game with hundreds of thousands of people in it. Like each person there was, was a nexus point for a large network of people. And most of the people I talk to are people in coffee shops, you know, who, you know, I show them a map and, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. So, so 
uh, uh, someone who actually knows the work I'm doing brought me on board to design the background structure for this Earth Manifesto. It's like an Earth chart. It's like a primary agreement reference point for humans to move into, let's say, the future. So, and it has tremendous buy-in from the people there. It's the beginning of me sort of waiting, okay, well, when's it gonna start? When, you know, how's this gonna start? Like, I'm not starting at any time I do anything, nothing happens. But if I just sit there and wait, a door will open and that's the door to go through. And what I can see by any type of divine timing, I mean, our little pea brains can't kind of comprehend these larger things that are going on. So, you know, th there's, there's a big difference between, let's say, bringing a product to market and doing all the business stuff versus creating a cell for a new paradigm economic structure that is in competition with the corporation to build a whole new way of being for human beings. And there's a lot of people, way showers, pioneers that have these new paradigm tools ideas, processes, whatever it is, that are very, 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 very different from those fear-based, manipulative, corporate, oppressive, tactic, fear-based things, right? There's a big divide happening right now. People who want, you know, a beautiful, loving place for everyone, and people who actually want to control and fuck with everybody. And that little group of people, whoever they are, you know, have this international banking, system, financial, whatever it is. And to me, we have to build a whole new system. And that's what I'm talking about, a whole new system. Now, people either believe that can happen or they don't. People either know that we as a species need to evolve, we need to transform, we are in the process of, the internet is transforming. It's a global communication system, feedback systems, us do media for free like this. This did not exist in our lifetime, right? We we're growing up. We could not do this. What was impossible before is possible now. And now we've got billions of people and the world is in a place of shutdown, came to a stop. And here, coming out of the cave, I'm coming going, well, what the heck do I do with what I got? And William is one of the few people who has any idea what I've done. Enough to go, hey, go talk to this guy. Or like, I, I don't expect him to actually believe or understand what I've done, but I know what I've done. I know what I have. I know the jewel of what it is. But to bring it into the world in a good way, like when I said, like when I gave, I gave the 72 conversation types for free, upload to Facebook, put them all up as PNGs. Anyone can take them, put them in the software program right now and go, as you say, for, be first to market and do something with it. I had to release that fear or release that ownership because it's not, this stuff isn't for me. It can't be mine. Can't, I can't own it. This is for the species, for the good of the species. And you got to take your ego constructs out of that, at least from what I can understand. So you're the, be, the beginning of me talking to world-class leaders, because from what I understand from, from you, I mean, you are someone who can do something. Like if, if you were given something, you can do something like, like it's, it's like in Lord of the Rings, like a foot soldier is very different from Aragorn. You know, a, a, a foot soldier is different from Gandalf. Gandalf can raise the whole army and go attack and support Gondor and go after Sauron. Like I'm a wizard, right? I mean, different human beings have different capacities. And when you're operating at different levels, you're, you're, you're trying to find people who can operate at your level. I'm sure you're, you're, you're used to dealing with people who can't deal at your level. Yeah. Um, the, the challenge that I see in front of you is this. The only actually completely integrated AI that exists on our planet is the financial system. It's the one that's working. It's the one that's actually driving the globe right now. It's, it's, it's the one we should be most afraid of, frankly, because it can just turn you off in two seconds, right? But my question is, and I, 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 I want to back that up. I know that when you reach a 1% capacity of something, 
that you have the ability to reflect and change the other 99%. And it's one of the greatest tricks that's being played on us currently, actually. So I'm born in the 70s, raised in the 80s, reared in the 90s, and now here we are in the 2000s. And I've been on the internet since 1996, but I've been on the World Wide Web since 1981. They're fucking different. I had an Apple, I had an Apple IIc in my bedroom when I, in 1981, when I was eight, and I had a 14.6 or whatever the fuck the modem was to Fairleigh Dickinson University in New Jersey, who had, who had a larger modem, and that, that's the World Wide Web. We are all now on the internet, which was launched actually around the AOL time when they started handing out all those free CDs. And, and the browser race and the Google race and the Netscape race, and now we're on the internet. So one of the things that I think is very important is how people understand how vocabulary has been fucked with. So the word mainstream is two words. Main, stream. So the mainstream used to be telegraph. And then the mainstream was radio. Then the mainstream was TV. And now the mainstream is this right here, this digital space. And unfortunately, that mainstream is always controlled. So the hardest conversation to have, I actually think, is the financial one because it is the most autonomously controlled. However, in the age that we sit in, I think that the argument to be fought is the personal freedom one. And what people are opting into is the oligarchy of stupidity. And I think that one of the greatest freedoms that can be given to somebody is their own actual time. And I would argue that if I could ask of one thing not to be given back of whatever we're in right now, pandemic, virus, control system, whatever the fuck this is, is I truly hope that people don't give back the time that they've made for themselves. 25 minutes to breathe or to meditate or to take that walk or, and that I actually think is the crack in the machine, not the financing that I couldn't actually explain if I wanted to. I've been doing commercial stuff the entirety of my life. And I joke to people when I say, could you imagine if an insurance company had to explain insurance in their commercials? That's why they give you the fucking duck or the iguana or the lizard. They really had to explain insurance. First off, none of us would buy it because we'd all get up and leave the room because it's scary as hell. (laughs) Right? So it's not something I'm going to go. I'm not going to start an insurance company. Not that I don't think I can do a better job just because I really think that's going to crush me. What I will do though is start a well-being company and explain to somebody that if they live a better, more fulfilled, healthier, and more nutritious life, that maybe their insurance could be different. And I think that's the opportunity that lies down right now. So where people are watching beef prices go through the roof because whatever supply chains interrupted because that's what they, whatever the fuck they are, want to happen right now, you could explain to somebody that if they still wanted to eat beef or pork or chicken, that maybe they should look back to local farming because then that couldn't be interrupted. And maybe, just maybe, if you knit a nice enough sweater and you bring it to the farmer, he'll give you some steaks for free because that's bartering. And maybe in that time management of community, you can get something back and thereby that ripple by the one that goes out to the side is going to smack the banking in the face. Not the one that's going to go this way because actually the Trojan horse is money because it's the least important thing that we have. And for some reason, it's the most talked about stressor in people's lives. Therefore, it is everywhere and nowhere. So you might as well ride it like a virus. Oh, look at me using proper terminology. And get everywhere. And this is what I mean. 
It's faster for you to go on to Instagram, who's owned by Facebook, and sell your cards to 5,000 people. Then it's going to get 5,000 people to pay attention to what they should do good for themselves. As silly as that's going to sound. Because the 5,000 cards could be a gift or a coaster or a tchotchke or, hey, that looks great, or it's an impulse buy. And not until the 15th time that they play the game do they understand it. But for that same person to have to stop and think about something and how they're going to change their life, they went right past. So commerce is actually the one place that you can get somebody to step off the train. My wife and I are fully actualized, aware human being. We know what we eat. We breathe. We exercise. We pay attention. And we vote with our dollar. It's how I can make conscious choices of what I shop or where I shop or who I support to allow other people those types of freedoms that I want for them. So though I agree with you, it is the great slave. When you begin to recognize what well-being is for you, you actually start spending your money differently and will become less of a slave to it. So you can cause and effect. So though I agree with what you're saying, I would argue that we could align it into something that empowers somebody to then take an entire look at themselves. And finance is always that thing because it's, why do I work a hundred hours a, a day, a year, a month, a week, a day, whatever, to have nothing. And then somebody stops giving their time to the system that doesn't remunerate them. So then that system's going to have to change. I will give you a very simple example. I drove up to Connecticut two weeks. I live outside of Philly. I didn't pay one toll. I'm not saying I wasn't charged a toll. There are no more toll operators. You're frozen. It's frozen. Can't hear you. Oh, I'm I sorry. I didn't hear the last minute or so. After okay. The toll. Okay. So there are no more toll workers, at least in the east coast of the United States. It's not a conversation that we've had as a society. It's not that I'm aware of. We've been being told for years that we're going to have more and more jobs automated, and then oops, this thing happened. So those people went home, and we haven't had the conversation that I promise you they're not coming back because they've already been replaced. There were cameras that took photos of my license plate that will send a bill to my house. So the states will collect their tolls. And since I've already fixed the solution, why would I send somebody back to a job that I'm already sending them $600 a week to stay home? So since that's already happened, you don't have the opportunity to express to the toll worker, hey, before this happens to you, you have to change your life. My point is you're not going to be able to keep up with that river. It's already flowing. But what you can do now is help the person that has to realign their life, find a bigger purpose, and then maybe look at their social economics and force that to change. That's all I'm saying. It's just a different lever fulcrum scenario. Same weight, different placement on the rock. So... Just a, a bit of an aside, maybe not necessarily focus on me. I, I had this moment where I'm working on the software program. I have somebody in New Zealand, New Zealand who's working, who's doing it from the good of his heart, and his computer broke down. And my computer is an old shoddy thing. And again, like I said, I, I haven't gone out for funding. I've been sort of doing everything on gas fumes and, you know, I say what, but I've got prototypes all kind of at different levels of, of whatever. And this is, again, done with fumes. And, you know, William's there, he's, he doesn't have a laptop. And I was thinking, I, I, I made a commitment to him, like I, my first sort of money commitment. So I said, you know, in two weeks, I'm gonna get you a laptop. That's just me starting to go, okay, because I got a business system. Like the irony of my life is I've had this business system as, as a theoretical construct and all these tools, but I've been, again, I, it's, it's hard to describe 
being in that cave and the what? No, I, I can understand it. Look, I have a sister of mine that owns an art gallery in New York. And many, many years ago, when I was still very much in the music business, I said, you know, how do you know when to do a show for your artists? Yeah, oh, Alex, to be honest with you, I have to go into their studio and kind of take the art off the wall and put another canvas up for, or they'll just keep painting over the same one because that's art. <laughs> they're already doing what they're doing, man. Yeah. And they're doing it really well. Problem is nobody took the canvas out. So now there's like, you know, the canvas is this deep when it could have been that deep. You know, and I, and I have <laughs> one painting where I could have a hundred. So th there's a trick in that. There really is. Which is why I said curation versus enterprise. Gotcha. So example, there are some things that you couldn't live without while there are other things that you could be like, Pfft. but you don't know that yet. Or maybe you do. And I would say that curation and putting something into the world that is consumer-based, is yeah, money's great, but it's about actual reaction because you don't know who you're talking to yet. You think you'd like to, and I get it all the time because I use words purposely difficult sometimes and purposely in different lexicons or slangs or whatever it is, right, to relate to whom I'm talking to or to obfuscate what I'm trying to say from somebody I use words. So I don't know what will connect yet until I, until I watch somebody's eyes go, ooh. So that's the same thing. Like, we got to try some of these things on. And there are huge communities right now online, in the Instagrams, in the YouTubes, on the Etsys, it, that people are looking to connect with things, right? So even just the base consumer is awesome. And then the person that actually is awake and, and alert and, you know, and, oh, I've been looking for that, you know, People trade books and ideas and podcasts and all of those tools. Oh, I saw that diet on this thing. Oh, I heard that breathing method on that thing. Well, the same thing is true in your, you know, what you have there. It's, an, it's, a, it's a tool. But without giving it to the world, yeah, you know, like, you're not, and I don't, and I mean this very jokingly, but Viagra was a heart medicine. And not until they gave it to people did they realize what it was actually for, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just we, we have 10 minutes. Yeah. And I'm seeing that, you know, again, we could probably talk for years. And uh, there's the philosophy that we're talking versus, you know, sort of an aim point of where we can connect and, and see how we can perhaps work together. Um, I would, I ask you, is there a way we can get a laptop to Graham like as soon as possible? I don't see why not. I'm sure there are extras floating around. Because he, he needs one, and I said I'd find him, and I'm just, everyone around, I'm just, he needs one. And you're, and to me, you're his main business guy. He's looking to you to be his main business guy, so should you get him a laptop? I wasn't aware that he was deficient. Of one. Okay, well, now now you are, and I would, world, I would world, suggest, I would suggest. It starts like this. Okay, he's, he's like a, that. no, 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 but the thing is, he's a very proud man, and I know what it's like to be in a situation where you We're think you think you should be given everything to help you, but no one's giving you anything. <laughs> yes, but here's the thing. The world doesn't care. It is for you to ask. Okay. Well, I'm the, at... universe, the universe gives you everything at birth. And how else does it owe you? Nothing. Until you figure out how to ask and connect. Okay. So, well, I'm asking for William to get I, I will a laptop. I will happily source that for him. Perfect. There. There you go. And we need two more, one for me and one for the my programmer, but that's an aside we just met. I don't want to hit you up. The programmer is the hardest one because he because Graham can use a virtual state one because he's just a writer, so everything can go into a cloud. The yeah. programmer is the technical one. That's a hard one. That needs you need a hard a, a solid state for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, um, I I, I like I'm in the, the I switch from a non schedule to a schedule life and I I have like I'm training I'm, I'm training for planetary guardian teams. I'm beginning to teach, which was the big step for me to do. I've got four cool. teams of four that I'm teaching and great results. It's lovely. Um, I've got I'm doing like shows like five shows like this where I talk to someone once a week and William's one of them. So I'm I'm doing a lot of media because I know that I have to train, I have to do education, right? Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time that I'm working with a software program and then I, again, I've got, you know, like 
eight game boards, uh, probably 20 card sets, uh, about 200 maps, all that come together, to create software program. So I'm like, I'm in constant overwhelm all the time, uh, just nudging ahead with my little kind of uh, steps, but I'm, I'm seemingly picking up pace and I'm, I'm, I'm handling what is occurring, but I'm, I'm forming my team. I just also, just before coming on with you, I, I just put on Facebook going, who wants to be on my crew? Like who actually wants to be on my business team uh, without, you know, I've never even asked. I never, you know, I, I've sort of been hinting and, you know, it's, it's always this kind of sitting back going, well, who's going to notice me? And, you know, my, my core wound is the need for validation. So it's been sort of driving me nuts with this frustration. Let me say this to you. I've said this to every artist I ever worked with. You need to recognize that though every grain of sand on the entire globe is unique from the one next to it, you have to put it under like a 300x microscope to recognize that. So it is not the job of the person standing on top of you to see your uniqueness. It is the job of the grain of sand to get hot enough to move the person the fuck off of them. Nice. <laughs> so we recognize our uniqueness it's about as the guys from monty python say you know no one expects the spanish inquisition it means you have to do something a little bit different than the last guy you know what i mean like you can't just well, nobody's going to wait and be like I, oh i mean I, yeah. the, I do have that one down pat don't you worry <laughs> so elijah i have a question for you where are you based i'm in vancouver you're in vancouver proper or outside inside Okay. I asked because I might have people, ge you know, in your geography that can help. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, let's, uh, if you have anything that you can share or show me that I can look at that is visual, you know, like that I can read and go through that isn't a setup, so to speak, like you describing, <laughs> that's what I should say. I <coughs> excuse me. I'd love to take a look. My, my, like two things have been, let's say, whether my weakness or I haven't done, which is necessary, the business plan and the website. I've got like 10 or 20 websites. I've got tons of writing. But I, I don't just, believe I, in business plans. Okay. By the time they're finished, you have to start over. I yeah. believe in websites and strategies. Business okay. plans are like... Okay. Well, I've, I've got like, I actually have a whole business system, which is the irony That's of the ridiculous. No, 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 no. You know. A business plan is you writing the executive summary and the point yeah. of this and that, that, by the time they're comp that you've compiled them, somebody's already done it. Yeah. You've done the hard work. Now it's about putting a strategy to it. And that's just having people agree on what their parts are, how to keep them accountable, and then checking on them. Yes. That's the, that's the plan of business. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. All right. Okay, okay so I guess we're coming to the end. You don't mind. like I, I Any discussion like this, I put on a, a YouTube no, I don't channel care. called... I, I don't care. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm not bashful and I, and I stand by things I say. And if I change my mind, I say that, you know what? I changed my mind. Okay. So I'm fine with it being in the world. Okay. Um, very nice to meet you and thank you, you for, well, for, for listening. And I, I, I hear you and I'm, uh, I'm interested in pursuing further, uh, whatever it is. Uh, I don't have to know much, you know, I, I, I know things take steps at a time. Exactly. One step at a time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we're coming to an end and then we'll just communicate and see yes. how it goes. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, big thanks for William for introducing us. That's a, you know, it's, it's such a valuable thing, you know, to be introduced to a, another of the clan Of the clan steward. He's doing his, uh, he's doing an umbrage to his, to his, his family. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I guess until next time. Thank you very much. Have a great day. See you.